What's up everyone? So today we're going to be talking about how to make asynchronous APIs like synchronous APIs without having to pass in a callback function um, using coroutines. And I'll be using NeoVim because we have Lua and Lua has coroutines. At the same time, we have libuv in NeoVim so we can do asynchronous stuff. Uh, now, if you don't know what coroutines are, I highly recommend watching these two videos. First one is from uh, CppCon. Uh, from from 2022 they introduced uh, coroutine, coroutines for c++ uh, with version 20 um, yeah highly recommend this video as well as this one right here what is a coroutine anyway from uh, python conference and this explains how they do asynchronous uh, io using coroutines right now let's get started by the way my camera might die in the middle of the video because battery is low all right so first of all let's create a asynchronous api i'll just simulate set timeout in javascript so function set timeout uh timeout as a first parameter and i will get a call back as the second parameter then i'm going to get a timer in uh libuv vim loop um new timer and I can call timer start. You can see the parameters here. We need to pass in um, object itself, um, then timer repeat number of repeats and callback function. Uh, since we are doing the colon here, we don't have to pass in the current instance. Instead, we can start from the second parameter, which is the timeout and um, number of repeats zero. I don't want to repeat this. Uh, more times then the callback function actually i'm going to create a function and call callback in here all right um okay. um there is a warning so i'll just add asset to timer just to null check all right now um we can call this function here I'll add a print statement. I'll just add one and set timeout. I'm gonna wait two so two thousand milliseconds. Then call this function right here. Let's print two here, and down here I'm gonna print three. Obviously, if you know about asynchronous APIs, then you know the output. Uh, it's going to be print. It's going to print one. Then it'll call this a timeout, but um, it's not going to stop the i mean the uh, it's not going to block the thread so next print is going to be the number three then after that uh, after the timeout you know in the callback two will be printed to the console All right um we have one and two uh, sorry one and three then after 200 milliseconds it's going to print two just like that uh as we expected now um how how can we print three after two well simply you can move this uh, print statement into the call callback function right like this and we can run as you can see from the output we get one two three uh now how can we wait another 200 uh, sorry 2000 milliseconds and print three uh like we did earlier we can set timeout another 2000 milliseconds and i'm gonna move this into the function actually i'm gonna need a second i have to let the cat out okay let me just run this one more time you can see one then two then after 200 milliseconds it's going to print three all right cool however we are creating callback health in the process you know if you have to add another 200 milliseconds i mean 2000 milliseconds then you're going to uh, have to do that inside here so you are creating callback health now to avoid that using co uh, coroutines you can um, do some changes actually let's start with removing the callback function right here so i'll remove that here i'm going to remove this as well and we're not going to pass in the callback function either now to create a call uh, coroutine we have to wrap these 
uh, into a function. So let's create a function called run and move these two into the function just like this. And here, um, I'm going to create a coroutine, coroutine create and pass in the run function. It's going to give me a handle. I'm going to store that um, using co variable. Um, then to run the function, I can uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to use create because it's a little bit confusing. Instead, I'll just do wrap. And I'm going to wrap the uh, run function here. You can directly call this uh, uh, return value to run the uh, function. All right. Now, yeah, I'm going to add a print statement. I'm going to print two and here i'll just print three all right let's run this you can see one three then after two obviously this is not what we expected now let's go through this set timeout one more time when we execute this it's going to start the timer however it's not going to pause the execution here so to pause the execution after timer start i'm going to uh, call core routine yield okay now it's going to stop here if i put a print statement here it's not going to execute that as you will see in a second um yeah you can see it has paused the execution right here it it will not print out the uh this this value right here uh, now to resume the execution uh we can use coroutine resume where do we do that in the callback um coroutine resume however we need to pass in a uh, coroutine handle but right, to get the handle i can run coroutine running i'll store the handle to variable called co and i'm going to run uh, coroutine running this will give me the handle here i'm going to pass that in to the function like so all right once again it's going to start the timer and when you call yield it's going to pause pause the execution um then once resume is called it's going to continue um to the next statement which is this print right here then after that it will print three all right let's try this again one um if i get the a print output you can see one two then the this statement right here after that we have three all right cool now you can see this is just like a uh synchronous api you know set timeout is acting like a say uh synchronous api by the way the when you let's say like print before i cannot type after what am i doing all right uh i have before and after uh print statements you so when i run this you can see before and after will be printed immediately uh even though this look looks like a synchronous api it's actually in reality it's not uh, all right now let's say uh we want we are calling an api and we are going to get some response back from the server now how can i return those values from the core routine well it's pretty simple when you pass in some additional stuff to the resume it's going to pass that back to the yield okay i'll just add some at my youtube username and here to uh to the uh, sorry uh, from the yield function it's going to return the additional values values you have passed in okay so to store that i will create a variable and i'll print out the value just like this now when i run you can see one is printed then we have two because it, it's going to call uh the callback then we are going to resume so whatever the things after just uh things after uh, coroutine yield will be executed 
so we are printing the value even the return value will not be executed until you resume uh, this thing right here resume the uh, coroutine all right to return this it's pretty simple like you would return anything you can just simply return it from the function and here we can store the variable to uh, uh, store the value to a variable and print out the value um value is value all right let's run this one more time and let's get the output you can see we have one two value is syntax and we have number three i mean pretty simple uh this way you can you know run asynchronous apis just like you would run uh just like you would run a synchronous api so that's pretty much it um thanks for watching have a nice day